Good evening. I had an unconventional childhood. My father, George McCalman Sr., was a sociopath, a brilliant one, who spent my early childhood manipulating and tormenting my family and I. But that's not what this story is about. It's about the maternal force that brought me back. My grandmother saved me. And in medium size, who's about that? Uh -huh. And then the big ones. Okay, so like the, the medium size is... One and a half, we are pong. Okay, so the medium size, the big the ones are big ones the big longer than your hand. Yeah, the okay. big ones are like that. I don't think I've ever uh, seen them like seen. that. Mm -hmm. no. You see, do it like that. Yeah. Lyris Holder was born in 1923 on the northwestern point of the island of Grenada, where I was also born. I've always loved her first name, Lyris. I've asked several times where it came from. Like many things I've asked her about herself, she's dismissed it or changed the subject. Called Miss Lyris by my family and I, she is unfussy, direct, opinionated, and has a sharp sailor's sense of humor. I'm an only child. My parents divorced when I was seven years old. My mother and I moved back in with her parents to get our bearings in the aftermath. My mother was recovering from an abusive relationship, and so was I. The trauma aged me, but my family related to me as a child. My grandmother related to me as an accomplice in activity, conversation, and sustenance. We spent many hours in Grenada's St. George's Market, where I accompanied her in her various tasks, watching my grandmother as she navigated, negotiated, and haggled with the market vendors was and remains a singular joy. I learned many things. Among them, you should know where your food comes from. When we went to the fish market, she knew all of the female vendors. She knew all of their business. She knew them on a first name basis. They only knew her as Mrs. Holder. Mm -hmm. But I see the job when I get him. He's very scarce now. Yeah. I see the job, so that was the thing I like. The meals my grandmother prepared remain so clear in my brain, I can draw them from memory. Fish soup, crab back, baked snapper, palau, rice and peas, roti, callaloo, sorrel, fried jacks. Special dishes not found regularly since I moved to this country 39 years ago. More than a great cook, my grandmother was a captain in her own kitchen. She set her, her boundaries with our family. She didn't appreciate help she didn't request. And you would be dismissed if your presence became distracting. <laughs> she chopped, stirred, wrapped, salted, and then she waited for your feedback once it was in front of you. It always tasted like the home I had lost in my childhood. Watching her at the St. George's Market as a child prepared me for my life. Observing her in her natural element showed me a path to my own. She shopped for food, produce, and advice. She asked after the children and the elderly of the people she spoke with. She made eye contact. She touched hands, shoulders, and faces. She laughed, she chided, she scolded, she flirted, she encouraged. 
My family's name is well known on the island of Grenada, mainly because everyone knows my grandmother. She's active and present in the lives of her community. That wasn't something I understood then, but I understand it now. My grandmother is 95 years old now. She has slowed down in some ways, not much in others. She still goes to the market, not as regularly. I visit her several times a year. On my most recent trip, my aunt, her daughter, went to the market and bought her her favorite dish to cook and eat, locally called Jack's. Jack's is a local whitefish. My grandmother sat and cleaned the fish herself with her hands and her knife. When I complimented her skill, she smiled and said, yes, boy, I still have it. I said earlier that my grandmother saved my life, and I need to explain. I was raised by a father devoid of an emotional center. It was my earliest indicator of how the world actually worked. I learned that you had to be smarter, more clever, more precise, more prepared than anyone else that the world was cynical and twisted. That was the first language I learned as a boy. The second language I learned was one of community and love, that knowing yourself did not mean excluding the world, that food heals trauma, that community can uplift. For the child of a sociopath, that was an entirely other way of being. I didn't believe it, but I paid attention. My grandmother and I have an uncommon relationship within my family. It is known by everyone that I am her favorite grandson. <laughs> and she is my favorite grandmother. Ms. Lyris and I are affectionate with each other in ways that she is not with anyone else. I think she knew that I needed it. You bought a fish, you bought a fish, or a hard fish. No, you bought a fish, is you scale fine. Thank you. <laughs>